someone looks at this and says, be careful. You have five ladies. You are in a relationship. You are a Christian. Have just one relationship. And he's talking. And while the man is talking, he looks at another woman who passes from his office. And he, in Jesus' name. And he, he forgives himself. No, in Jesus' name, I will be faithful. You, you got it. But your humanity came. You, you, you don't. I'm sorry. I wish I were lying. I would have just said I'm sorry. But it's true. Let me round up by telling you a story that changed my life. Thank you for the time. Please sit. Pastor, when I started ministry, I counseled, I had the privilege of counseling a woman. And the woman made a statement. And she told me that they were in a serious financial situation. Like a, an acute financial situation. It had to do with, you know, it, it was a life and death issue anyway. And they needed X amount of money. And it was very serious. And so she had discussed with her husband, things would not work. And, you know, they didn't want to lose the lives that were on the line. And she resorted to go and meet her boss and request for a raise. Explain the situation. And the man, according to the whole thing, was not a believer. You know what I'm talking about. And now, she went to this man and cried her heart like a dear woman in pain and travail would do. Please help me, sir. I need a raise. Lives are about to die. A, B, C, D. And then the man looked at her and said, you're not a small girl. When you want a raise, you know what to do. Period. And that was it. And she vowed and said, no, God forbid. I'm a married woman. My husband, I'd rather die and all of that. And she left. When the situation got serious and he was going to literally, she was going to lose the persons involved and they were going to die no more, she opened up to her husband and told him, sir, there is a way to get this money, but it's a terrible thing. And this man spoke to me. Both of them cried and cried and cried and agreed. That instead of this person dying, I'm your husband. I don't consider it unfaithfulness. Please, whatever you will do. Now, when I heard that thing, the painful part is that everything went on and so on and so forth. It's easy for you like you are hearing, ah, God forbid, be careful. Be careful. You see, please, I want you to understand my heart as you hear me cry and talk. So that you will leave this service today with a new way of looking at men. Someone will be shouting at you and you will not even quarrel them again. You say, just go and listen to the message I listen to. And meet me at the other side of my meditation. Your, your shouting is a, is a revelation of a, a deficiency of an understanding. Listen. The woman was broken. When I heard that, I nodded my head. And I said, life. Now, if that story were to happen in our generation, I know what we would do. Madam, God forbid, stupid woman, useless woman, blah, 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 blah. And while we are talking that nonsense, God in heaven. This is why sometimes when God keeps quiet, you should be quiet too. Because God knows what he's seeing that you are not seeing. Are we together? You are my brother. And yet you could not give my child a job. May God punish you. May God do this. You are in a position to give my child a job. And the person is trying to explain to you. Look, you will not understand. What is it that I will not understand about? What is it to sign? You gave other people. I'm trying to explain. Look, the nature of my office. What is it? And then God teaches you a lesson by promoting you. You call it breakthrough for a while. But he will promote you in an office where you are the only Christian. And he will position four people who desperately need jobs. Church members. And 
you will make sure you announce the testimony in the presence of everybody. And now, they meet you and say, how far? Six months? And you've not given these people jobs. You say, well, I'm, I'm working on it. And then God will say, I brought you to this point to build in you compassion that is easier said than done. When you were talking about somebody in a position, you do not know the challenges that they go through. This is exactly what we have said about our fathers. Oh, look at this error. Oh, look at this error. Oh, and many times, it's even surprising that it's with the young people who are advocating these things. We've not started, oh. We've not built anything. We've not done anything. We've not raised anybody. And yet we are so outspokenly arrogant. Fathers come and say, lift up your hands and we stand in our arrogance. This man have edited all your messages. I know the 35% that makes sense. The remaining is just rubbish. I'm dealing with that. Well, lift up your hands for what? If I, I know the five ways to receive impartation. And we stand there in our foolishness and our pride. This message this morning is a charge. It's a bit hard. We'll be soft in the evening, but the goal is to file us. Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. God is building us because this is how oil comes from olive. It is placed in a threshing floor. God loves you too much to leave you the way you are. And so he's doing this. In this message today, is a salv the salvation of many people's children. You will be surprised how your life will change and people will ask you what happened and you say, come, let's go to church. We don't get this, as I would say, in a bank. We don't get this in a classroom. We only get this in the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise. We're going to do two things very quickly. Please give me volume. Number one, prophetically, as I sing this song, you're going to leave your seat where you are. Don't, don't come and waylay the minister's disclaimer. Don't cross here. Just greet yourselves. You're going to walk around and look for someone. You don't need to know who the person is. And just hold, if it is to cry, cry. If it is to greet, just let them know that, look, I now understand we are men. I don't know what pain. I know people are crying. I don't know what you are facing, but there's nothing to be ashamed of. We are men. The mercy of God is a system that remedies your being a man. There are people right now who are, who are here, maybe with diseases that are killer diseases, and it is your greeting, your hugging, your celebrating them, that will let them finally know that I will not be ashamed to go and see a doctor. Tomorrow I'm going to the hospital. I believe God, but I can go to the hospital and say, Doctor, I'm a man of faith, but please check me. Can I be walked on? There are people here who are in all kinds of financial situations. Yet the Bible remains true that you are the head and not the tail. It's not a contrast. Keep your faith alive. But have the fortitude to outsource the wisdom that you will need that will take you out of that. There are people here who are trusting God. They love God. Yes, you will be a mother of nations. But no man has come to you to say, my, my sister, I wanted to say my daughter. My, my sister, you are beautiful. Let me go and see your parents. It's easy to say, no problem, I don't care. Very soon, your humanity will reveal that you care. And so there's nothing to be ashamed of. You are going to walk around and whether it is to hug, just greet, just tell people, look. God understands. I understand now. The problem has never been God. The problem is us. We have refused to understand. I spoke to you about your failed business. And I said, God forbid. You are not wise, but now I understand. There is no room. We, 
we quarreled two days ago and I didn't know that you had your mother died and that was why you were so moody. Now I know that you are human. You are still a businessman. You are still a man of God. This is how far God can go. We are not acting. It is prophetic. We are releasing something from this place to the body of Christ to say it is time for us to rearrange things. It is time for us to come to a point where we are the first to rally around people that when soldiers are wounded in the body, the only condition, listen to me, I'll be sharing with you that negates the operation of God's mercy is the hardness and the rebellion of a man's heart. Mercy is useless until brokenness is in place. This is already a teaser into the other parts. So please, what you are hearing now is not all of it. There is another side to it that will give balance to what we are teaching. My teaching this afternoon is a revelation of the reality that we are men. And if God can stoop down from heaven and come to us as men, we as men don't need to stoop down. We, don't, we just need to reach out. And there is another man close to you who is crying and hurting. This is not some emotional talk. There are many men of God broken. There are many people who cannot cry to anybody. They come and open up to people and the next thing, their stories are all over the world. Sir, I'm so sorry. I was under pressure. I took from church money. I took this. I, I vowed that I will, I will, I will restore this. I'm, I was under pressure. I need counseling and I need prayer. And the next thing, you call everybody from there and say, the next time you see this man near your offering envelope, run away. It is true that Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He did not die forever. So while you are talking about Jesus the dead, heaven is celebrating Jesus, not only the resurrected, but Jesus, the one who is sitting on the throne. Jesus only died for three days. So when men die, before you check, talk whether they've come alive or they are still dead. Don't be like the two men in Emmaus, talking about the Jesus that was dead, whereas he's already alive. I know that last year, the man was not a tighter, he was not faithful. Do you now understand his current dealings with God? Or are you talking about the man who is no longer alive? I know that as at last year, her father had not given his life to Christ. And while you are calling the family a hedonistic family, God had already sent an evangelist during Christmas and all of them are now born again. Make sure you update your heart and your perception of men before you talk. Jesus died, but he only died for three days. He did not die forever. So rejoice not over me, my enemies. That's the cry of a generation. As a businessman, as a man of God, though I fall, in the economy of God and through the mystery called mercy, there is a provision to rise again. Is there hope for a tree even if it be cut short? The Bible says at the sound, at the scent of water, it will bud again. Are you ready? The next two minutes, walk around, find someone. You are going to sing and cry with someone for the next two minutes. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, no you won't tear down, coming up to me. There's no shadow you won't light up, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming up to me. Prophesy to someone, pray with somebody you are holding. I know ten of your children are drunk. But the hand of God is still coming. Don't give up. I know you are 10 years buried, but you will still have a chance. Now, the person you are holding or hugging, you are going to pray with that person. You don't need to know what is wrong with that person. Lord, the grace to rise above the pain of the humanity of that person. Is someone praying at House of David? Pray. I don't know what bills may be on you, 
But in the name of Jesus, I agree with you here at this mercy conference. I know you are struggling to raise your children. People have condemned you that your children will be useless. But hear the word of the Lord. There is hope for a tree. Man of God, you used to be in ministry. But now it's like the grace has gone. Don't give up. You can start again. You can rise again. The relationship you thought would lead to marriage, now you are surprised. Seven relationships, no marriage. Don't be discouraged. You've been in Lagos five years, no job. Don't be discouraged. There is a God of heaven. Men may talk, your loved ones will talk, your past will talk. But there is a God in heaven who is still the lifter of man. No shadow he will light up, mountain he will climb up, coming up. You will light up. No shadow, you will light up. Mountain, you will climb up. Coming up to me. Hallelujah. Let's look up one more prayer point, and I drop the mic. Everyone, please look. 